ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಂಧಸ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುರೋನ್ಮಿಲಿತ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನ್ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣೆ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸದಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮೋ ಹರೇ ರಾಮೋ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೊ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಅವರ್ ಡಿಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಪಾಸ್ಟ್ ಟೈಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಶಮಂತಕ್ ಮಣಿ ಸೊ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಸತ್ರಾಜಿತ್ ಟು ಹ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ಶಮಂತಕ್ ಮಣಿ ಟು ಕಿಂಗ್ ಉಗ್ರಸೇನ ಉಗ್ರಸೇನ was the king of dwarka satrajit refused instead he gave that money to his brother prasena so prasena goes to the forest and is killed by the tiger and the tiger takes the money away and in dwarka the discussion begins that krishna is responsible for this murder of prasena and that discussion is initiated that rumor is initiated by satrajit himself so that is what we discussed yesterday karne karne ajapan janaha from one year to another year this discussion actually grew who is responsible for this murder so it was the speculation of satrajit prayah krishnena nihato mani grivo vanam gatah bratah mameti tat shrutva karne karne ajapan janah so he speculated that actually krishna is responsible for this and uh, the devotees of dwarka are considered to be so exalted they are eternal associates of krishna but the nature of transcendental you know leela is such that through this leela krishna is demonstrating what are the dangers of discussing subject matters without confirming its authenticity and people can get influenced by that so there was not a single iota of truth in this accusation by satrajit because krishna had absolutely nothing to do with prasena being killed but the news spread like that and the dwarka vasis started discussing amongst themselves that how krishna is responsible and consider the irony of this that the entire city of dwarka with all of its opulences was created right out of the ocean the city of dwarka did not exist before but because there was a threat on the lives of the yadavas krishna cared for the yadavas so much krishna was concerned about the welfare of the yadavas so much because he felt that mathura is going to be under repeated attacks 
So Krishna personally arranged for a completely new infrastructure to be created out of the ocean by his Lila Shakti. So it was not that the entire Yadava clan came together, they employed construction workers, architects, and they dug the foundation, reclaimed the land, and then they started actually building this Dwarka step by step and all of them contributed. The entire city of Dwarka was built overnight by Krishna's will. And then all the Yadavas were given palaces to stay. So Dwarka did not consist of apartments or condos or flats. You know, each Dwarka Vasi, it is described, had a palace. And the material for construction used in Dwarka was primarily gold, silver, diamond. So this is the kind of houses they were living in. And it was not that Krishna was charging rent. <laughs> He became the landlord and he was taking rent from all of them. The purpose of Krishna coming to the material world is not to make some more money and go back. Lakshmi Sahasrasya Sambrahma Sevya Manam Many people feel that. Why Krishna came? Was there a market crash in Vaikuntha? <laughs> so practically speaking, not a single Dwarka Vasi had any effort to their credit in the creation of Dwarka. And they were just residing there, enjoying all the opulences, enjoying all the facilities, simply by Krishna's mercy. It was only Krishna's mercy by which they were staying there. But the nature of propaganda is such that it covers over one's intelligence. And the Dwarka Vasis forgot that our entire existence here in Dwarka is because of Krishna. And they started discussing how Krishna is the culprit. So therefore, it is not difficult for the mind and the intelligence to get bewildered by different types of propaganda. So that is a very, very important theme. This particular pastime is depicting that as soon as we come into the material world, you cannot avoid the climate and the climatic influences of the material world. If you say it is winter, then you cannot ask why it is snowing. Because it is winter. You know, I was in Chicago uh, four days back. At night when I slept, it was 20 degrees, 22 degrees. So I slept with all the window open and everything. When I got up, I was feeling very cold. That what happened? It is two degrees. Overnight. So we don't have experience like this in India. That overnight it goes from 22 to 2. Freezing. So I, when I asked the host, what is going on? They said, it is Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> what is the answer? It is Chicago. <laughs> That's how it is. So if someone says, I am working so hard. I am doing so much for so many people, but the very people for whom I am serving and helping and doing everything, they are criticizing me. Why? Why? Material world. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? Okay, who is responsible? I am responsible. Because I made a choice to come here. Right? So therefore, Krishna is demonstrating that don't become so discouraged and morose if you are criticized by your peers. Right? 
So in spiritual life it is very easy to develop relationship with seniors. And it is very easy to develop relationship with the juniors who are very very younger to you because they all consider you are pure devotee. <laughs> Prabhu, Ashirwad. And you say, okay, okay. It is not so difficult. Is it not? One of our devotees, uh, you know, Raj Bihari Prabhu, before he got initiated, so his, his uh, name given by family was Venu Gopal. Venu Gopal Acharya. So when he came to the temple in the first week, so our one more devotee is the Radhavala Prabhu, so they met each other first time. So Radhavala Prabhu asked him, so what is your name? So he said, I am Venu Gopal Acharya. So Radhavala Prabhu was like one year older, so he knew, you know, what is initiation and all. So he asked, oh, Venu Gopal Acharya, so you are initiated? So he was new, first week, he didn't know what is initiation. He thought initiation means like you are initiated in coming to temple. So he said, uh, yeah, I am initiated. <laughs> so Radhavala Prabhu said, really? Since when you are coming? Since one week? <laughs> you are initiated. <laughs> By whom? He pointed to me. By him. <laughs> <laughs> so he got even more bewildered. <laughs> that when did this guy start initiating? <laughs> then after some time, you know, he realized, okay, what is this process and what is what? So when you meet someone for the first time and you start giving them transcendental knowledge, they really hold you in great awe, reverence and respect and start respecting you and speak nice words to you which you may take too seriously. <laughs> and that is where the problem begins. So now I have spent 20 years in ISKCON, so I have gone through the whole cycle. Because so many people, you know, uh, who got connected in the initial days and then they joined temple and then they are part of management and then we have meetings in management and then they start shooting left and right and then when they become so heavy I have to remind them, Baba, at one time I taught you some Krishna consciousness, <laughs> give some respect, <laughs> don't blast me so much, <laughs> then, okay, okay. <laughs> We give concession based on Siksha Guru. <laughs> so all those initial, you know, honeymoon period will go through. And then later, when the person grows up, then don't expect that person to still respect you and worship you and, you know, listen to all you say all the time. So then the differences will begin and then issues will have to be sorted out. So many times when people are not in a mood to negotiate this traffic jam, everyone wants to be on freeway only, where you push the accelerator and boom, you know, the vehicle moves at full speed. So therefore being with equals is like being in a traffic jam. It's not so easy to just move forward at full speed. And if you push on accelerator, doom. There may be collision from the front or the back. So one has to be very careful. And uh, with respect to seniors, it is always very easy to be respectful to them. Because there is a natural relationship of awe and reverence. But our spiritual advancement is very much determined by how we tackle our relationship with equals. And based on that, we will actually advance in Krishna consciousness. That's a very uh, interesting principle. And so it is always good to get used to being in an association where one's thoughts and opinions are constantly challenged. It gives you good practice. 
and i would say that one of the greatest uh, advantages of staying in chopati has been that because there are so many qualified devotees so many intelligent devotees and so many advanced devotees you know so you can't impress anyone <laughs> in any area you know either preaching or managing or this or that so it's always good to be in a in a good ambience where many qualified people are there so that gives good protection and therefore krishna is uh, trying to demonstrate that there will always be certain differences of opinion and there will always be certain critical remarks caused due to misunderstanding or perception or whatever but that's what the climate of the material world is going to be and when i come i don't turn on the ac i still continue tolerating the heat here so krishna himself puts himself in such situations to encourage us that when i come the all perfect sachidananda vigraha the supreme personality of godhead who could speak the gita from the top of his head just like that you know one day before speaking gita on ek mokshada ekadashi krishna was not preparing notes ha huh? and after every chapter he did not refer to notes arjun one minute chapter 3 ended let me check chapter 4 begins he just spoke one hour he finished in one hour what he spoke it is taking our whole lifetime to figure out what did he speak so such perfection and a personality with this power he has been criticized and questioned by his very own men and in the very place where they have received as gift from krishna none of them thought that are at least we got some nice palaces let us shut up you know otherwise the palaces may go krishna may chastise us or do something no they were also speaking openly so therefore now krishna goes into the forest along with all of those associates and they come upon the tracks and they see that prasena is killed but there are marks of the tiger moving into the forest so all the dwarkavasis understand that this attack is not by some human being it is by some jungle animal so then they still want to find the shamantak mani because till you find the shamantak mani you cannot be very clear what is going on so then krishna led them further along the path as the marks were following so they reached one cave so krishna told the dwarka vasis you stay inside i will go in so krishna entered into the cave so inside the cave krishna saw that one small child was playing with the shamantak mani and when krishna came to pick up that you know shamantak mani immediately a huge bear came in front and that was jambavan ha incidentally they found the dead body of the tiger also so they realized that okay the tiger took it then someone killed the tiger and took this so jambavan had killed the tiger and taken the shamantak mani and give it given it to his kid to play that is what he thought of the shamantak mani so the small child was playing with the shamantak mani so krishna challenged him and both of them had a fight so that is described here that purusham prakritam matva kupito nanu bhavavit so the fight went on for 27 days and jambavan was thinking that no one can stand up to me like this it has to be the supreme personality of godhead and because jambavan had assisted lord ramachandra in the previous life in the previous incarnation in a treta yuga so jambavan it is described 
that he was, uh, you know, Jambavan was basically born from the perspiration of Brahmaji. And after he was born from the perspiration of Brahmaji, then he came in front in the form of a bear. So Brahmaji was, you know, looking at him. You now what happened was Madhu and Kaitab, these two demons, they were fighting. And seeing that fight, you know, Brahmaji became very much fearful that what is going on. And Lord Vishnu, you know, attacked Madhu and Kaitab. So the fight was going on between Lord Vishnu and Madhu and Kaitab. And as the fight progressed, it appeared that Lord Vishnu is going to be defeated. So Brahmaji was like watching this entire thing and the, the suspense was building up. So his anxiety increased. And when the anxiety increased, one perspiration, bead of perspiration came out from his forehead. And from that, Jambavan was created. So he was born. So Brahmaji looked at him and said, who are you? So he said, Are you should know, you created me. So you give me a name and give me a place. So he said, okay, right now the creation is not in place, but you have been born before the creation. So I give you the name Jambavan, and right now there is this fight going on. Go and watch this fight. He had to engage him somehow. So this Jambavan went and sat in the front row and saw this fight going on. <laughs> he was the only spectator. So he loved the fight going on between Madhu Kaitav and Lord Vishnu. Lord Vishnu defeated and killed Madhu Kaitav. And Jambavan was very happy and he clapped and said, Wonderful, wonderful, next match. <laughs> Let's have the next one. And Lord Vishnu said, When the next demon comes, only then I will become active. But because, you know, you have pleased me, so I give you the, uh, you know, vachan, that in all my incarnations, you will get a ringside seat. And you will be able to see all my lilas. So that is the kind of benediction Jambavan got. So when Vamandev appeared, Jambavan appeared along with Vamandev also. So when Vamandev pierced through the universe, then Jambavan actually circumambulated his lotus feet. And the whole universe is circumambulated. That much power he had. But after circumambulating Lord Vishnu's lotus feet, Vamandev's lotus feet, as he was returning back, he found Mount Meru. And Vamandev was, uh, our Jambavan was thinking, I am so powerful. And some pride creeped in and he gave a kick to Mount Meru. So Mount Meru cursed that may you become old, lose all your strength because of your pride. So immediately he became extremely old, prematurely. And therefore, in Ramlila, he was present, but he was very old. So therefore, when uh, the monkey soldiers were on uh, the ocean and they wanted to cross over, the discussion began, who can uh, jump how many feet? Hundred, uh, you know, how many yojanas? There was a gap of hundred yojanas. So one monkey said five yojanas, another monkey said twenty yojanas, someone said fifty yojanas. Angada said hundred yojanas I can jump, but only one way. Just in that one jump I lose all my power, I can't jump back. So he said hey, that's not you know, going to work. So at that time people looked at Jambavan and Jambavan said, Are there was a time I could jump and circumambulate the whole universe. But that was some other time. Now I can't do that. So therefore, there is one person who can do it and that is Hanumanji. So it is interesting to note that it was Jambavan who empowered Hanuman. It was Jambavan who actually found out the talent in Hanumanji and engaged him. And that is the job of a leader. A leader is someone who actually engages a devotee as per his skill sets in some service and takes pleasure in the glory which that person receives. So from that point onwards, from the time Hanumanji 
expressed his power. It was only Hanuman, Hanuman, Hanuman all through. You don't find Jambavan Chalisa. You only have Hanuman Chalisa. Right? But who was the one who spotted the talent? It was Jambavan. We don't have any temples of Jambavan. We have only temples of Hanuman. But if Jambavan had not made that move, that one critical move, so what would have happened? So therefore, each one has a role to play. And we should respect the variety in creation, the diversity in creation. Not everyone can perform everything. So if we respect that, acknowledge that, then we should know that no matter what kind of roles different people perform, all of us have equal opportunity to experience love of God. Our experience of love of God does not depend on the external manifestation of our activity. Somebody may be old and invalid like Jambavan and somebody may be young and robust and perform Herculean tasks like Hanuman. But both can be pure devotees of Krishna. So that is how the Varnashram is so perfect when we understand that all of us have equal opportunity with respect to experiencing Krishna's love. But that equal opportunity does not mean that all of us should be equal in the way we act and perform duties in Krishna consciousness. Because one has one skill set, someone has some, some other skill sets, and someone else has some other skill sets. It will all create confusion if everyone starts doing the same thing. Therefore, everything has a certain place. And in the society of devotees, problems and confusion arises when everyone wants to do everything. Which is not possible. Right? We have one brahmachari in Chaupati many years ago. He had no musical talent in him. Zero. You know? So he also acknowledged that and he used to only sing Prabhupada Dhun in his lectures, in his program. He had one satsang program and he would sing Prabhupada Dhun. One tune. So three, four years passed. So the congregation requested him. That are four years you are singing one tune. Can you give at least one other tune? The request. So he said, oh, okay, okay, why not? Let me try. So he came back to the temple, asked one of the expert singers, Are you teach me some nice tune, far out tune. You know, the congregation is asking, so I have to do it. So there's, Kirtaniya taught him some tune. And the problem is when you don't know music so much, you know, you hear Vayasaki Prabhu and Ayindra Prabhu and all those things, but when you sing, the same thing comes out. But within our mind, Aindar Prabhu is singing. But audience is hearing something else. <laughs> right? And many times you may ask, so how was this tune? Well, I thought it's the same one. <laughs> so he learned this new tune, went to the program, he sat on the Vyasasana, he tried to remember the tune, he forgot. Again, Hare Krishna Dhun. So he came back and said, I am not able to remember that tune, what to do? So this devotee who was teaching him said, Okay, next week I will teach you a trick. I will start teaching you the tune at 6 p.m. So you start singing the tune from 6 p.m., program is at 7.30, all the way till you reach program. Keep singing. So he was singing in the temple, singing in the way Grand Road station, in the train, in the middle of all the crowd, he was singing loudly to remember. He reached the program, he offered obeisances to Prabhupada and said, Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Preshtaya. He got up, forgot the tune. <laughs> <laughs> so 
So from that day he renounced any more attempts. So he's, you know, he realized. So what we can do, we should do. What we cannot do, why we should try to do. Because Krishna is served by millions and millions of expert servants in the spiritual world. He is not coming here to be impressed by our expertise. For him it is a big joke what we are trying to offer. You know, because what he is being offered in the spiritual world is so perfect. It is embarrassing for him. You know, but still he is merciful and he accepts. Another time I was, you know, uh, doing a program in a small town. And I was speaking on Krishna herding the cows. Go Charan Leela. And I thought, okay, Radhanath Maharaj makes sound of cows and monkeys and this and that. Let me also do. So I made some sound. I thought it was like a good, you know, good manifestation of the sound of the cows. So after the lecture, one gentleman came and said, Oh, konsa pashu ka awaj tha? <laughs> <laughs> I felt kind of, you know, angry. I said, Baba, whole lecture was on Gochar and Leela. What else will it be? It's cows only. It didn't sound like cows. I said it was Mumbai cows. <laughs> so then after that, I said, okay, just do what you can do. So therefore, here we find that Jambavan, he is now in a relationship in this yuga with Krishna. So in the previous yuga he was serving Ram. And therefore what he experiences is that because I cannot defeat this person, he has to be the Supreme Lord. So he recognizes that this is Krishna and surrenders. And when he surrenders, he is also wondering what Krishna is doing here. So Krishna explains, Mani hetor iha prapta vayam mrakshapate bilam mithyabhi shapam pramrajam atmano mani namuna So Krishna explains to him that Mani hetor iha prapta I have come here to obtain that mani. Mani heto iha prapta. Vayam rikshapate bilam. And therefore I have entered into your cave, O king of bears. But why do I need that shamantak mani? Mithya bhi shapam pramrajam to eradicate or to wash away the mithya abhishap. The wrong accusations, the false accusations which have been made against me, I want to remove that. Mithya bishapam pramrajam atmano manina amuna and therefore this is a very compelling and very important evidence for me to produce in Dwarka. Then only all of the accusations against me will subside. So he explains the situation. And in this way we can see that Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who simply by His will can achieve anything. But in this pastime, He is demonstrating that because there is a material propaganda, false accusation, to counteract it, Krishna is also doing some material counteraction by bringing that Shamantakmani. So therefore He is trying to protect because as a leader, there has been an accusation on him by the very people whom he is trying to serve. Mithya vishapam pramrijam atmana maninamuna. So therefore, Jambavan gives him that shamantak mani. But Jambavan is so pleased that his Lord is right there here and giving him darshan. He decides to give his daughter Jambavati also in marriage to Krishna. So this is the beauty of Krishna's pastimes. Krishna has the ability to reverse a negative situation, a misfortune into a fortune. 
to be accused falsely and to be put in this kind of a situation by the dwarka vasis was a great misfortune but through this predicament of misfortune krishna actually earned a goddess of fortune jambavati that is krishna's power so therefore in this way krishna is demonstrating that when we are put into a situation where people are accusing us people are criticizing us misunderstanding us the natural emotion is we may feel discouraged so it is all right to feel and experience discouragement but we should not stop acting so many times we feel so discouraged that we feel inclined to stop acting and stop serving and withdraw so krishna is demonstrating that here i have been accused by the dwarka vasis it is painful to the heart but i am not withdrawing i am struggling and fighting to try to clarify things and in the process some positive things are also happening so always look for the positive side so optimism is very important without having an optimistic mindset it will be practically impossible to move on in krishna consciousness so therefore there was no indication that krishna is going to get one queen but in this entire episode he got one queen extra jambavati right so this is the very important part that when we are in a situation of distress we should see how we can actually continue serving krishna in that situation of distress so that we are able to actually get something positive out of it when shila prabhupad you know he was preaching as all of you know that shila prabhupad had a difficult family life since most of you are grihasthas shila prabhupad's wife would not allow him to chant in the house he had to sometimes and chant outside on the steps leading to the terrace that's where he would sit and chant so in sita kant banerji lane shila prabhupad had a flat and on the first floor the gaudiyamatt devotees would be taught hari nama amrit vyakaran by dol govind shastri dol govind shastri was one of the disciples of saraswati thakur but he was a sanskrit scholar so he was training gaudiyamatt brahmacharis so one day he came out after giving a discourse Shri Prabhupada was sitting on the side steps chanting his japa. So Prabhupada's name at that time was Abhay Charan de Abhay Babu. So in the Gaudiya Math congregation he was known as Abhay Babu. So as soon as Dolo Govind Shastri met Abhay Babu sitting on the steps chanting he said I just gave a lecture on Prithvi Tyachi at Nagaradi Gram Sarvatra Prachar Hoibe Muranam. I gave lecture that Lord Chaitanya says that every town and village my name will spread. I don't know how it will happen. So Prabhupada, he was like chanting and he got down one step. And Prabhupada turned back and looked at Dol Govind Shastri and said, If Mahaprabhu has said it, it will happen. Then again he took two more steps down. Turned back and said, Someday a fool who is surrendered at the lotus feet of Srila Saraswati Thakur will make it happen. And Dol Govind Shastri started thinking, is it me? Because he was also a disciple. Prabhupada took two more steps down, turned back, looked at Dol Govind Shastri and said, it will not be you. So Dol Govind Shastri felt so offended and he started thinking, what does this Abhay Babu think? he thinks he will do it he will make it happen 
अभय बाबू एट दैट टाइम मीन्स मनी मनी एंड मनी दैट वॉज द काइंड ऑफ इम्प्रेशन पीपल हैड अबाउट शिल प्रभुपाद सो देर फॉर दे कुड नॉट इमेजिन दैट शिल प्रभुपाद कुड एक्चुअली गो आउट एंड डू सच अ थिंग एंड एस्टैब्लिश कृष्ण कॉन्शियसनेस वर्ल्ड वाइड एंड प्रभुपाद वॉज सिटिंग इन द केशव जी गौड़ियमठ and then some guests came and there were some life members and guests they happened to enter inside and prabhupada was sitting on the first floor loft and taking prasadam with one of his god brothers this was after his sanyas so this was probably in the period of you know 62 or 63 like that so these guests came up and they saw prabhupada and this his god brother taking prasadam and they looked at that and went down so when uh, prabhupad saw that he told to his uh, god brother so these people they just see two old men sitting and eating chapatis what they are seeing is two old men are sitting and eating chapati but they don't know that the future of lord chaitanya's movement is in the hand of this old man so prabhupada had so much of conviction that the krishna consciousness mission is going to spread just based on that so even when he was a and prabhupada was a grihastha he would take a, you know one of the very prominent disciples of bhakti rakshak sridhar maharaj bhakti sundar govind maharaj whose name at that time was govind brahmachari in kolkata so prabhupada was a grihastha but his preaching spirit was always strong so he would take govind brahmachari and he would tell him that since you are in saffron you sit and give katha so he would say are i am a new brahmachari i don't know any katha i am not trained so prabhupada said okay you just chant radha madhav and you chant some shloka from the gita then i will take care so he would make make govind brahmachari sit on the vyasasan people are sitting to hear katha and he would sing some kirtan and chant one shloka then he would stop and then prabhupad would be sitting in the audience in front prabhupad would turn around and then give full lecture and the audience would be you know mesmerized by his erudition and his scholarship and his enthusiasm and then after the katha prabhupad would tell the audience okay if you want blessings you can take from him so one thing which was consistent was shila prabhupad's enthusiasm to spread krishna consciousness all through difficult periods in fact one of his sons prayagraj was born in prayag he had you know difficulties and he had some mental imbalance and at some point he would be moving around the streets of calcutta picking up rags and searching trash cans to search for food so prabhupad was going through several challenges in his personal life so therefore as far as challenges are concerned that will be continuously going on so krishna is in this particular past time also demonstrating a very very important point that okay i have been accused that i have i am responsible for prasena's death this accusation is made by dwarka vasis only who are my closest it's painful but life must go on and activities must go on and therefore krishna is come to jambavan and he has got jambavati now so now in the meantime what happens that all of these dwarka vasis who are standing outside the cave they don't see krishna coming out and they feel that probably something has happened to krishna so they come back and they meet the other dwarka vasis and they start discussing satrajitam shapantaste दुखिता द्वारकौकस उपतस्थुश्चंद्रभागा 
दुर्गाम कृष्णो पलब्धये सो सत्राजिताम शपंतस्ते सो ऑल ऑफ देम स्टार्ट कर्सिंग सत्राजित सो द्वारका वास इज नाउ टर्न 180 डिग्री दे सडनली रियलाइज दैट ओ वी डिड अ रॉन्ग थिंग बाय एक्यूजिंग कृष्णा लाइक दिस एंड नाउ बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस प्रोबब्ली कृष्णा इज गॉन सत्राजितस शपंतस्ते दुखिता द्वारकाओं का सं सो ऑल द द्वारका वास इज बिकम वेरी वेरी सैड दे स्टार्ट लैमेंटिंग एंड उपतस्तु चंद्रभागाम दुर्गाम कृष्णो पलब्धये सो दे स्टार्ट ऑफरिंग प्रेयर्स टू चंद्रभागा डीटी एंड स्टार्ट प्रेइंग प्लीज प्रोटेक्ट कृष्णा प्लीज प्रोटेक्ट कृष्णा एंड मेक श्योर दैट कृष्णा कम्स बैक सो दिस शोस दैट द्वारका वासीज हैड नेचुरल अफेक्शन फॉर कृष्णा दे वर प्योर लवर्स ऑफ कृष्णा बट इवन देन वन कैन टेम्पररली गेट अफेक्टेड बाय सम प्रोपोगेंडा सो दैट इज व्हाट दिस पर्टिकुलर पास्ट टाइम इज डेमोन्स्ट्रेटिंग बिकॉज एज सुन एज दे हर्ड दैट समथिंग एज हैपन टू कृष्णा एंड दे फेल्ट लाइक दैट दे स्टार्टेड कर्सिंग सत्यराजित एट ही इज द वन हु स्टार्टेड दिस सो इन दिस वे एट दिस पॉइंट Krishna returns, and the Varka Vasis are in ecstasy because they see Krishna has returned with Jambavati. So it was like a double benefit that not only Krishna came, but you know Krishna has come with a wife. So when Satrajit hears this, Satrajit becomes very fearful. He thinks that okay, now Krishna is going to take full revenge, and the Varka Vasis are so angry; they may attack me. So Krishna comes with the shamantak money and gives it back to Satrajit, because Krishna doesn't want anyone to think anything negative. Bhagavan aha namanim pratichhamo vayam drpa tamastam deva bhaktasya vayam cha phalamagina. So Satrajit says, no, no. As you had said previously, you keep, give it to Ugrasen, do whatever. But Krishna is saying, "Tavastam Dev Bhaktasya." Arey, you are actually the bhakta of Surya Dev. You obtained this from him. Why am I full of bhagi? Now you keep it with you. Whatever results will come, we will all share. Don't worry. You keep. So Krishna is actually giving it back in sarcasm. So because Satrajit from within the heart doesn't want to give. But because of situation, he is fearful. I may get beaten up or something. So he says, "Oh, you keep, you keep." So Krishna says, "No, no, no, you keep." So he says, "Okay, no problem." Immediately he keeps. So that very much shows that he did not have that deep desire to actually offer it to Krishna in the first place. So therefore, at this point, Satrajit decides that I must do something. To pacify Krishna, and what does Satrajit decide? That I have a daughter, and her name is Satya Bhama. So probably, if I offer Satya Bhama to Krishna, then all these Dwarka Vasis attack, and Krishna's attack will not come. So as a diplomatic move, he offers. He see. He sees that Krishna has come with Jambavati. And he sees Dwarka Vasis are very happy, so he thinks, okay, let me give this Satya Bhama, so then all will be pacified. I can keep my Shamantak money, no problem. So he makes this arrangement, gives Satya Bhama. So in this entire episode so far, Krishna lost reputation temporarily, but gained two wives permanently. So that is how Krishna performs this past time. So now Krishna goes to Hastinapur, and as Krishna goes to Hastinapur, it is described that Satrajit he is actually unaware that there is a plot going on to kill him, and the plot is being made by whom? There are two devotees in Dwarka, one is Akrura, and the other is Kritavarma. So Akrura and Kritavarma come together, and they employ one paid killer, Shatadhanwa, and give him some money to actually kill 
satrajit in his sleep so this is turning out to be a you know movie plot so now the interesting question is why should akrura and kritavarma who are great devotees act like this so the acharyas are giving various reasons so like jeev goswami path says tridhar swami sanatan goswami all have given their different reasons one of the reasons it is described is because akrura was felt offended that krishna has been insulted like this by satrajit so he must pay for it and therefore we must kill him right as it is described by narottam das thakur krodh bhakta dveshi jane so it was a bona fide anger because it was to defend krishna so other acharyas say that akrura he had gone to brindavan to take the gopis away evam brahmana virahatura brjam brajastriya krishna vishakta manasa visrijya lajja rurudusma susmaran govinda damodara madhaveti so when krishna and balram were taken away by akrura so the gopis were crying evam brahmana virahatura brjam brajastriya krishna vishakta manasa they were so attached to krishna they were looking at krishna and balram going and thinking oh krishna and balram are going away what will happen and they were crying out visrij lajja they gave up all their shame and they came out right in public and expressed their love but they not only expressed love for krishna but they expressed anger towards akrura but what akrura was doing was part of the leela it was a service which he was offering for krishna because krishna wanted to now enact the mathura past times and go on to dwarka past times so akrura's role in vrindavan was part of a bona fide service but even in the course of performing bona fide service sometimes we break the heart of other vaishnavas and so jeev goswami pad says that because akrura broke the heart of the gopis and he was uh, cursed by the gopis so he had to go through some reaction some purification and therefore this particular incident happened some reaction was coming okay another acharya is saying that because uh, akrura associated very closely with kamsa for a long period of time he had to get some reaction for that so for the asat sang because of the association of demon he got influenced in this particular episode to some extent so whatever may be the case different kinds of reasons are given by different acharyas by different personalities but the fact is shatadhanya went shatadhanva went and killed satrajit news was reported to satyabhama she was in so much of anxiety she went running to hastinapur to inform krishna and krishna returned back and krishna and balram immediately went to kill shatadhanva when shatadhanva heard that krishna and balram are coming to kill me he ran to akrura that are you are the one who commissioned this do something to protect me and akrura says naham ishwaryo kuryam helanam ramakrishnayo konu kshemaya kalpet tayor vrajanam acharam so he starts speaking philosophy shatadhanva you know he is on fire he is about to be killed so he comes to akrura and akrura says naham ishwaryo kuryam are who can protect you from these ishwars they are supreme personality of godhead krishna and balram we can't do anything sorry you please take care of yourself hare krishna <laughs> so in this way 
Shatadhanva, you can imagine, he had absolutely no shelter. So Krishna finally goes and kills him. So when he kills him, he searches his body and sees that the Shamantakmani is not there. So the mystery still continues. That Shatadhanva was the one who killed Satrajit. Satrajit had the Shamantakmani. Now the Shamantakmani is not there. Where has the Shamantakmani gone? So Krishna again comes back to Dwarka. In the meantime, Akrura leaves Dwarka and goes to Varanasi. So in this particular period, Dwarka becomes filled with various kinds of, you know, miseries. So that is described here, that Akrure Proshite Arishtani Asanvai Dwarka Ukasam Sannimishto Tapa Muhur Muhur Daivika Bhautikaha So suddenly, famine hits Dwarka. The rains don't come. So when the rains don't come, the Dwarka Vasis again start discussing why the rains are not coming. So then one of the Dwarka Vasis starts saying, you know, Akrura has this blessing from his father, Shovalka. Wherever Akrura will be, rains will fall profusely. The weather will be perfect. Akrura had this benediction. So Akrura had gone to Varanasi and they heard news that in Varanasi it was raining heavily. So they put two and two together. Because Akrura has left Dwarka, there is misfortune here. Why Akrura has left? Another theory began. That Krishna felt, he felt very much threatened by Akrura's presence. So Krishna has chased away Akrura. So the Shamantak Mani pastime takes many twists and turns. So because Krishna has influenced, so Krishna has, he doesn't want Akrura to be here, so he is the one responsible for sending Akrura away. So therefore all the Dwarkavasis start discussing. So Shukadeva Goswami, he is so disgusted, even while describing this pastime, he says, Iti, Anga upadisham tiyate vismritya prag udahritam muni vasa nivase kim gatheta arishta darshanam iti anga upadisham tiyate vismritya prag udahritam vismritya prag udahritam these dwarka vasis are contemplating that akurura's absence is responsible for no rain Vismritya, they have forgotten. Prag Udharitam, all the glories of Krishna. Are just a few years ago, Krishna has lifted the Govardhan with the left finger, little finger of his left hand. Krishna can control Indra, they have seen. He can get rains whenever he wants. But now the discussion is Vismritya Prag Udharitam, they forgot Krishna's glories. So this is the disease that over a period of time we forget the glories of Krishna and the devotees. And therefore, one of the aspects of intelligence is also memory. Memory. So when memory goes down, automatically along with memory going down, one more thing goes down, which is gratitude. Because both memory and gratitude are connected. How is that? Krita Gya. Krita Gya means that you remember what someone has done for me. So Vismritya, they forgot. Prak Udahritam Muni Vasa Nivasekim Ghateta Arishta Darshanam And therefore there has been so much of attack. There have been so much of rains and everything. So therefore, this is an offense of taking Krishna away from the Prajagosi. Prajagopis. So Akrura was forced to live in Kashi amongst Krishna's enemies and suffer separation from the Lord. Okay. So now, this is a very beautiful uh, description that at this point Krishna realized 
that these Dwarka Vasis are going out of control. First they accused me of stealing Shamantak money. Now they are accused, accusing me of chasing Akrura away. Tomorrow I don't know what they are going to say. So he called Akrura back. Hey Baba, please come. And Krishna directly asked accuse, uh, Akrura, you have the Shamantak money? He said, yeah, give it. So again Krishna took the Shamantak money and showed it to all the Dwarakavasis. So in this way, he returned, he showed the money to everyone and returned it to Akrura. And through this pastime, we can see that two times Krishna's reputation in Dwarka has been questioned. Twice. And for the second time, the Lord brought jewel to Dwarka to establish his integrity. So twice he had to bring the Shamantak money to Dwarka to establish his own integrity. And this amazing series of incidents demonstrates that even when Krishna descends to this world, there is a tendency for his peers to criticize him. And uh, the Acharyas are, you know, our Hridayanand Maharaj in his purports concludes by saying, the whole material world is infected by fault-finding propensity and in this chapter, the Supreme Personality of Godhead demonstrates the nature of this undesirable quality. That even when he descends, how he is subject to criticism, fault-finding. And therefore, through this pastime, although Krishna gets the association of Satya Bhama and Jambavati, the main theme which he is trying to demonstrate is that the nature of this material world is such that there will be various complexities, there will be issues and misunderstandings. So we have to learn how to deal with it with certain integrity, with certain maturity. And that's a very uh, important principle. And that's how just like Agastya Muni broke down the Vindhya mountain and united the north and the south part of India. Like that Srila Prabhupada appeared and broke down the mountain of cultural divide and united the east and the west. So what Srila Prabhupada did was something astonishing. And in just a few years, practically, you know, the east and the west, in west Prabhupada was transplanting eastern philosophy and culture. And people accepted. And then from the west Prabhupada brought the disciples back to India. And then he was using them to spread Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada told one disciple that, you know, he was sitting in Vrindavan and doing bhajan for a long time. So Prabhupada told him, why don't you go and preach in Sri Lanka? And his disciple said, Prabhupada, Sri Lanka is a very small country. Prabhupada said, okay, go to Pakistan. So immediately he said, okay, Sri Lanka is better. So Prabhupada went to America, he spread Krishna consciousness, so many of the western disciples helped him spread the Krishna consciousness in India. Prabhupada was in Jaipur and there was a group of Indian businessmen sitting there and he had one or two lady disciples with him and these businessmen were challenging Srila Prabhupada that, okay, you have brought these American disciples but uh, do they know any Shastra? And Prabhupada said, what do you mean? This girl here, she knows whole Upanishads. <laughs> Prabhupada advertised like that. But this lady disciple, she knew only five shlokas of Isha Upanishad. <laughs> Prabhupada told her, chant the Upanishads. So she started chanting first shloka, second shloka, third shloka, and her heart was beating. That after fifth shloka, what will happen? When she came to the fifth shloka, Prabhupada said, stop, that means you know everything. <laughs> so one of the businessmen sitting there, he said, she chanted the shloka, but her pronunciation was not proper. Prabhupada said, but her renunciation is perfect. Because she has come all the way from America here to spread Krishna consciousness. What are you doing? 
So many times the tendency is rather than appreciate what someone is doing, we see the faults. And that is a very a great challenge to overcome in the progress of Krishna consciousness. So therefore, we are very fortunate to be here in Srila Prabhupada's mission in a way that we can practice Krishna consciousness along with our entire families. And as I was discussing yesterday, all of you are extremely fortunate to be connected to such an active and thriving temple here under the leadership of Hari Vilas Prabhu. Really appreciate his efforts in inspiring the devotees and providing such a platform for engagement. So much service, so many activities, and especially for the children and the families. You know, such variety of activities is extremely encouraging and inspiring to see. So therefore, you know, no one can complain that I don't have opportunities. No one can claim that I don't have facilities. You know, the opportunities, the facilities, the varieties are unlimitedly being provided here. The only thing is, what is my inspiration and what is my commitment to take to all of that. So therefore the ball is in our court. How we respond to all of these wonderful opportunities being provided. So therefore, as you know, a conclusion to this pastime, we should always feel grateful for what we are receiving. There will always be problems, there will always be difficulties, there will always be challenges. But if Dwarka Vasis, you know, could get influenced and start developing feelings of negativity and fault finding and complaints about Krishna, so negativity can overwhelm anyone anytime. But we should always remember, Kritagya means to remember with gratitude what we have received and try to share it with others with a, with a grateful heart, with a loving heart. And that is extremely pleasing to Krishna. Kritagya konu seveta duraradhyam asadubhi. And in due course of time, you know, we will be able to please our Acharyas, Srila Prabhupada and the Vaishnavas with our humble and consistent efforts. So I want to thank His Grace Hari Vulas Prabhu and all the devotees here for setting such a wonderful example of Krishna consciousness. And it's a role model for uh, outreach in North America. Because Srila Prabhupada had so much of uh, you know, feeling for North America. He had so much of hopes from the North America. But now it's a great challenge to, you know, connect with people here. So really appreciate the various efforts going on, especially like Anand Mela and so many efforts are going on to reach out to the people. That's what Saraswati Thakur said, Prana Acheyar Sei Hetu Prachar. You know, if there is life, then one will always try to share Krishna consciousness as much as possible. You know, one uh, school principal came to Saraswati Thakur and he said, you are my guru, you are my guru, I will do anything for you. So Saraswati Thakur said, okay, you have a long beard, why don't you shave it? So he said, uh, that is a little difficult. So he said, okay, then, you know, why you are saying I will do anything? So the man went. So he was driving cycle in the village. So he fell down from the cycle and his beard got stuck in the cycle tire. <laughs> so all the villagers tried to help him, but it got so stuck that they had only one choice to shave it. <laughs> so they cut the beard. So he got forcibly shaven because of the situation. So then in a few days he came to Saraswati Thakur and said, I am ready to be your disciple now. <laughs> By circumstances. So Saraswati Thakur, you know, he would always quote this, Pran Acheyar Sei Hetu Prachar. That 
we should try to reach out to as many people as possible and shed so many gallons of blood just to inspire one person to take to Krishna consciousness. So I think that wonderful opportunity is here for all of you. And Krishna is specially arranged this wonderful facility. And as uh, yesterday we were discussing, now you are going to uh, double the facility. So you will have one more wonderful facility in Bellevue. Okay, so more temple means more opportunities, more service. And more service means opportunity to take more responsibility and more anxiety for Krishna. And to the extent we take responsibility and anxiety for Krishna, to that extent we will become purified, we will advance in Krishna consciousness. Right? So responsibility means when our intelligence gets engaged, how I can do this, how I can do this. So if each devotee is contemplating, how, can, how I can take more responsibility for Krishna, how I can assist the senior Vaishnavas in their service to Srila Prabhupada and the Parampara, to that extent we will come closer to Krishna through that mood. So therefore, the opportunities are there. The ball is in our court. How do we respond to that? So thank you all very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Nithai Gaur Primanande Hare Krishna Hare Krishna. Thank you, Gorang Prabhu, for wonderful pastimes on Shyamantaka uh, Chal. Today evening, uh, the class will be at 5. From 5 to 7, we will have a uh, class on Art of Happiness, lessons from Chari Khan pastime from Chaitanya Chaitanya Amrita. 5 to 7, class. Hare Krishna. Thank you.